Welcome to Studio 58A Live here at the Jamaica Information Service, our discussion program coming to you live on Facebook and Instagram. I'm your host, Vaughn Davis. Thank you to everyone joining us online, wherever you are around the world. We really do appreciate it. Thank you for your eyes. And as you watch, remember to send in your questions and your comments so we can put them to our guest. And like how we have your attention, do us a favor now. Share this video with a friend or two or 5,000 so we can have a very lively discussion. Now, financial freedom. It's a catchphrase being tossed around lately as something we should all aspire to. But basically, it's a fancy way of saying having enough money to live your preferred lifestyle on your own terms. That means working if you want, not working if you want, spending your time doing what you want to do. Sounds nice, right? Sounds nice. But how do we actually realistically do this? Especially those of, especially those of us who don't come from money or magically know how to divine the winning lotto numbers. Well, that's what we're here to talk about today with special focus on good financial habits that young adults should begin to practice so they can lay a good foundation to get to financial freedom. Here with me to discuss the topic is one of the country's top business journalists, Kalida Reynolds. Thank you, Kalida. Hi, Vaughn. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank hi, you Facebook. Hi, Instagram. Hi, GIS Radio. All right. So, Kalida, what does financial freedom mean to you? Ooh, financial freedom. But, you know, let me start with a little story. Mm -hmm. Recently, my daughter said one of her friends, and they're teenagers, mm -hmm. she said one of her mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. told her that he can't wait to be financially independent. Mm -hmm. And I said, me too. Right? <laughs> yeah. Even though I'm in my 30s, right. I, I, I wish, as a matter of fact, I wish I could be financially independent. I just have somebody pay just all my bills, just, just take care of me. Yeah, I don't right? really... Financial independence, you know, when, when you grow up, you kind of realize, mm, it's not Yeah, what I it's kind of a scam. This be. adulthood thing was really a scam. We should have stayed 10 or 15 years old. Your parents had to pay all your bills and just you money. pay all your bills life. and you're good. But financial freedom really means just being able to ideally do what you want because you have the money to be able to, to go on vacation if you want. You have the freedom to... If you get sick suddenly, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about money. So right, to me, right, what financial right. freedom means is not having to worry about money mm -hmm. in the event that something happens. Or even if it's just your next payday, just how, how are you going to pay all your bills? If you're worrying about how you're going to pay all your bills, you're definitely not financially free. If you're worried about owing people, you're not financially free. Right. And if you have a major event happen to you, right. you're catching an accident or something happens, and you can't maintain yourself, you can't figure it out beyond the next paycheck, you're not financially free. So financial freedom means not having to worry about money. That's what it means to me, anyway. One thing I like, I like to ask people is, when did you realize, you know, the, the whole, I guess, the disparity in terms of what you thought it was to, to get money and then what you really realized in terms of actually earning and making like real money in real life. When did that happen for you? Just about two years ago. <laughs> it's not right. been long. Right. It's not been very long because I was raised the way a lot of us right. are raised on the traditional, you go to school right. and you study hard. And you work harder, you get a good nice job, job and, then... and then you just stay at that job forever. Mm -hmm. Or maybe get another job with that, that pays better, and you get promoted, and you move up the ranks. Right. And that's how you—that's how you're supposed to spend your life, and that's how many of our parents spent their lives, and, the, and our grandparents spend their lives just mm -hmm. working for other people. Right. Many of them working in the same job for 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm now starting to realize over the past couple of years that. That's not all that it's cracked up to no, be. It's, like it's a it's a trap. What exactly. did you call it earlier? It's a scam. A it's, scam. It's, it's, like, it's a fraud. <laughs> like we did. I mean, I really believe that a lot of the financial education things that we just picked up from our parents mm -hmm. are things that we need to unlearn to really achieve absolutely and financial freedom, like we're talking about. Here. Absolutely. So we need to be talking about wealth creation. Right. And the keys to wealth creation do not involve just work slaving away at a job right waiting, forever. For, waiting to get that paycheck at the end of the month and then hoping that that carries you over and with enough left over for you to actually do the things that you want to do exactly so there are actually three keys to wealth creation mm -hmm. one is entrepreneurship right two is investing in stocks bonds the, the capital markets and three is real estate 
right. And so when we talk about wealth creation, we're not talking about just ha just being rich. There's mm -hmm. a difference between being rich and being wealthy. You mentioned uh, key, the magic key to the lot of numbers. Right, right, right. People who win the lotto are rich. Yeah. They're not wealthy. That's true. How many stories do you hear of People, lotto winners just going broke going within broke a year because or two they don't years? Know that money, there's rules to money. And the same thing happens with a lot of you know, artists, mm -hmm. a lot of athletes. As yeah. soon as they retire, so athlete gets injured, and they were being paid all this money, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. They're being paid all, paid, paid all this money, and then within five years, they're broke. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens with artists. So you have this one hit song, two hit songs, you're hot for a minute, right. and then a couple of years later, you're broke right. because right. you were rich. You had a lot of money, <laughs> rich. but you weren't wealthy. You didn't know how to apply that money to make that money work for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm just beginning to learn it myself, and I tell people I've become like an evangelist because right. I feel like I finally started figuring out this thing called adulting, right. this thing called life, that you don't have to live on that cycle, that treadmill, that, that hamster wheel, right. just going round and round, trying to make ends meet at the end of each month. I discovered, well, I've been a business reporter for a few years, mm -hmm. and so I've been reporting on you know, the performance of the Jamaica Stock Exchange and right, whatnot, right, right. and you know, companies doing well, and now all these companies IPOing, mm -hmm. and I've been reporting on you know, how well the Stock Exchange has been doing globally. So in 2015, and 2018, we had the number one performing stock market in the world. Exactly. And 2019 as well, right. that report just came out that Jamaica had the number one performing stock market in the world. So a couple of years ago, I looked at my husband and I said, well, I'm just reporting on this stuff. We have some money sitting down in the bank because we were taught that you save. Right, you just save. <laughs> another just hoping, another you know. thing that we're taught, you work hard and you save your money right. in the bank. And eventually, it will accumulate enough where you can buy a house. Right. <laughs> That's a myth. <laughs> That's oh not going to happen. Oh, God. When you, when you say it like that, boy, it's like it just hit me. You know, because I've been having the same thought. I don't know if it's like we're 20 years old. It's like those same no, thoughts. No, a lot of us are head. going through it. So yeah. we had this money in the bank that we just put aside and we save it. And, you know, just being our good selves, doing our jobs mm. and saving a little bit here and there and hoping to buy a house right. eventually. And I said to him, but look at all this money that people are making. Right. When he said IPO open and close same day. Yeah. I said, why am I reporting on this every to, day right, and not doing it? Of this stuff, right? And not doing it when I have access to the information. So we spoke and we decided we're gonna, you know, try our hand at this thing. Mm -hmm. And we've had some very, very, very good results Very good. and um, ever since then and of course it can't you can choose ones that don't do as well mm -hmm. our very first investment wasn't the best because we just jumped on the bandwagon at least for me I didn't even read the full prospectus I just heard this company was going to an public, IPO so. going public and to me all IPOs were Must a sure, be successful, were a sure right? thing yeah. so we just put some money in it and we didn't lose money on that investment but it, it remained flat mm. We didn't gain anything right, on it. Right, right, and right, so after right. that, I said, okay, we need to do some more research. We need to start reading the things properly, understanding what it is, seeing what these companies really are all about and what can happen from there and making better decisions about what we want to do with this money. And since we started taking that approach, we've been reaping much better right. financial rewards. And, and I've become, I feel like Moses, like, go tell it I, on the know, mountain. It's funny, I feel the same way. <laughs> I feel evangelistic about it now. Like everybody needs to know these particular things. And I, I, I want to share the word. <laughs> right. You know, it's funny because there's a friend of mine, Michelle Sinclair Doyle. I used to do a program. I, see, I do it from time to time called Dollar Wise. We try to provide practical yeah. financial advice to persons and one of the persons I met in the process of doing that was Michelle Sinclair Doyle who's the client financial education manager at JMMB, Jamaica mm -hmm. Money Market Brokers and she had a goal of making sure that every Jamaican was financially literate by 2020. Mm -hmm. That's her motivation, that's her goal and I feel the same way. I, feel, mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying about evangelizing and making people appreciate that money, there are rules to money mm -hmm. and if you really want to 
make some and have some in your pocket so you can live the life that you want, mm-hmm. you need to start playing by those rules that the rich Absolutely. people are, do, are doing. So, Khalila, where does one begin? Where, as a person who's just hearing your voice for the first time and understanding that I need to start making some money moves in my life, where do I start from your from your opinion? Watch Money Mondays. Right. <laughs> Shameless plug. Right. Okay, so I mentioned three keys mm-hmm. to wealth creation. You have investing in the capital markets, entrepreneurship, and real estate. Mm-hmm. Of the three things, which one, Vaughn, you think is the, the easiest or the cheapest one to get into to start? Stock market. Probably the cheese, right? Why, yeah. why you said a stock market? Probably because you can raise, uh, you can raise some money, and 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 you know it doesn't. You, once you have a little money, you can find out, do a little research, and find a company to invest in, buy some stocks, and hopefully that can turn over. It won't turn over any money right away necessarily. Some it might do. not. Some do. I'm not going to say it won't, but that's probably a good way to get started in terms of investing. Understanding that you can invest and hopefully see a little returns, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So am I right or am I way off? Or, or, or no, I, I would tend to agree with you mm-hmm. that investing is the, the easiest of the three to mm-hmm. get into because at least on our market, you can start with like technically a thousand Jamaican dollars mm-hmm. for some things like Wigton, a thousand dollars was the minimum investment. You can't really... St- well, maybe you can start a business with a thousand Jamaican dollars. Yeah. I don't know what kind of business well, or what kind know. of returns you're gonna get. You definitely can't maybe buy real estate. Maybe you can buy some banana chips or something and yeah, sell, and or sell it. back or something like that. Maybe I don't yeah. know, but yeah, you definitely can't buy real estate with a thousand Jamaican not. dollars. Absolutely not. But even but so it would be the cheapest and the easiest mm-hmm. because even if you're buying the banana chips to resell, mm-hmm. that still requires some effort on right, your part. Right, right, you still right, have right. to go find customers and. You know, try turn that around mm. and see what ca- calculate your profit margins, right, right, setting right. up your business. So that still requires some more effort. Whereas investing, well, it does take effort too because you have to become familiar with what is being offered because mm-hmm. you don't want to make a bad investment right. and lose your money. You can't just put up money and hope for the best. It doesn't quite work like that. You have to be strategic in how you operate. Exactly, right. exactly. But of the three, so you can start by investing and then you can get to your goal of home ownership much Mm. faster that way if you can double triple your money which is happening on the market now some Mm -hmm. people are making those kinds of returns on certain investments when you look at fontana for example Mm. fontana listed in january at a dollar 88 cents per share Mm -hmm. it's now october and i would have to check where they are last i checked it was at like seven dollars and change from january to now that's uh, that's more that's yeah (laughs) It's a lot. It where was, was. It was where almost. Where was I when? The, where was I when that was? <laughs> where was I? <laughs> it was almost at nine dollars at one point, Jeez. from one eighty-eight. And now that they have this new store that's open, right. Waterloo Square. Right. So you know, just that. in time for Christmas rush. So you and they know. have a lot of toys in there and Christmas stuff mm. and so and because it's new, you know, people like new things. Right, it's right, place right, day right. pack. So I, I anticipate that they're going to make some good returns from, from that as well and right. probably see the stock price go further. No, I, I, one of the things I've been thinking about when it, um, you, see, you mentioned the three R's in terms of you know, real estate, getting investing in capital markets, that kind of thing. And it brings me to the question of what does a good portfolio of investment look like, especially for a young person who might just want to get into it? Because you realize that you need to have diverse streams of income you need to have multi you need to have like a, a, a nice picture you mm-hmm. know what i mean in terms of money that you work you might have to go out there and earn for yourself the invest in for example the stock market or invest in real estate that kind of thing but from your perspective what looks like a an a, a portfolio of investment that a young person or person in our age bracket that kind of thing well not well, and persons who are young well, at heart you, as well you're getting me into the realm of financial advising remember i'm not a financial advisor well, exactly, so i can't give that kind of ad- no but just like advice. based on your like what 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 looks like to you uh, as a you know things to kind of start casting your attention towards in terms of building a portfolio that you, you think persons might be you know see some benefits from you know it all depends on you, mm-hmm. which is why I keep telling people, they're always asking me, well, what should I invest in? And I say, I can't tell you that. I'm not an investment advisor. Mm-hmm. I say, well, what do you invest in? I'm like, don't try to trick me. I can't <laughs> tell you that either. Okay. It all depends on your risk profile, mm-hmm. which is why I always say that you need to sign up with a broker, a licensed financial advisor. They will, they will appoint you a licensed financial advisor, a wealth advisor, whatever they call it at that particular company. Mm-hmm. And then they will, one of the first things they will do is take your risk profile. So are you, 
are you very risk averse? Are you very um, conservative mm -hmm. with your money? Or are you somebody who is willing to take a little bit more risk in return for a little bit more reward? Mm -hmm. Or are you moderate? So they're mm -hmm. going to take your risk profile and, and your goals, because what are your financial goals? Mm -hmm. Is your goal to double your money in six months? Because mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would require some more risk. Mm -hmm. Or is your goal to buy a house by the time you're 30. Right, right, right. Depending right. on how old you are now, so it just how many requires years some, do you have? Some introspection on your part to understand what your goals are and what you feel like you're right. willing to try right. to, make it, to make it happen. Exactly. So based on what your goals are, your financial goals, coupled with your risk profile, your advisor can recommend a good diverse portfolio for you. They said, mm -hmm. okay, you should put some here, you should put some here. Mm -hmm. if, your risk, if your goal is retirement planning, your advisor might suggest, okay, buy some bonds mm -hmm. for, from wherever because bonds are more long-term investments. So you get your return in 20, 25 years mm -hmm. as opposed to if you have a more short-term investment. Like right now, I need to figure out how to put my older daughter through college. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Which I have to pay for in like two years, a year and a half, two years. So that's a more medium term objective. I can't put my money in bonds for that. Mm -hmm. I need something that's going to give me a, a, a return in that time period. I like the, when you mentioned the word risk, because I think a lot of us were conditioned by our parents and their parents to save your money. Play it put safe. it under the mattress, mm -hmm. cover it up. Mm -hmm. Don't um, don't let anybody touch it. And it's like I think that's one of the things that we have to unlearn. What's your take on risk and how we should at this point in our lives, young persons, not young and young at heart, be approaching the concept of risk when it comes to making some money? I think personally, when the younger you are, the more risk you can take on mm -hmm. because you have time to recover. Yeah, you have time to to rebound. So if you're in your early 20s, you have all the room to make mistakes right. and learn from them and recover. If you're 55 and you're looking towards retiring at 60, mm. you don't really want to be taking on yeah, a whole lot of risk at money. that point. Nah. You don't want to be taking those chances with money. I think young people are in a prime position to take a little bit more risk. You still have to pay attention. Mm -hmm. You still want to know what exactly you're investing in, but you can take a little bit more risk with um with your investments. I feel like for persons like you or myself, you when you have children and uh, families and so on, that's when you kind of start accepting or uh, realizing the possibility of taking the risk and, and see, you know, because you can, it's like a calculated decision. But for those young persons out there who might not, who just, you know, just probably just start work, just start collecting their first series of paychecks, that kind of thing. What would be your message to them to let them get comfortable with the idea of risk? Okay, I'd say pay yourself first. Mm. And by pay yourself first, I don't mean you go out and do your nails before you pay your bills mm. or you go out and party before you pay your bills. What I mean is that you set up a salary deduction at your work. So you just start, especially if you've just started working, mm -hmm. that way you don't even miss the money. Right, right, You don't right. even miss that money. You set up a salary deduction, you have that money go straight into an investment account or a savings account. Right now I'm at the point where I say invest straight into an investment account so that when an IPO comes up or an investment opportunity comes up, that money is there easily, set aside. You easily do available. You, do. you don't have people saying, oh man, I missed this one because I didn't have any money right now. Mm -hmm. So you have that money set aside that you don't even miss because you are living on, living off everything else. Mm -hmm. You don't even realize that that money was, it never meant anything to you day to day because from you started working, it was already going somewhere where else. it's supposed to go to start making some money for you and that way if something happens to it you also don't miss it that right, much you because know, it, it never that was the goal fight anyway to exactly. invest it and do something with it right exactly so you can take some risk mm -hmm. with that money because it's not affecting your personal life you're not taking money out of your day-to-day -day budget to go invest in this new ipo it doesn't affect you it, you're not not paying a bill right in exactly. the term <laughs> Because you're trying to invest in this IPO and hoping to flip it in a That's week. That's kind of like unwise. You have to know hoping what you're doing. to flip doing, yeah. it in a week and then you can pay the light bill <laughs> and have a little extra. And yeah. I know people who do that, who just want to flip the money very quickly. That's kind so, of a risky way to live. <laughs> I mean, that's kind. Of, I mean, if you're high I mean, risk, hey, if you, if that, if you're, def, if that's your risk tolerance, I mean, some then, people hey. have made quite a bit of money doing it if you choose the right ones, because yeah. not everything is gonna flip double in a week. All right, well, Some things will take a little bit more time to, to do well. 
Some of them might not do well at all. At all. Yeah. But if you have that money set aside from the beginning, it's not as risky to you. It's not affecting your day-to-day -day life. All right. So we're here online with um, Khalila Ranaz, business journalist. She's sharing some tips to help you get your mind around making some money. May I, things that you can start doing to build a foundation so you can start moving forward and making, you know, moving away from the old mindset of just save your money to actually taking your money, flipping it and making more money on top of it. And it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a practice that requires consistent effort. And, you know, for you to make the kind of sacrifices, but at the same time doing what's necessary to realize your financial goals. I want to show some love to the persons online, to Ricardo Porsche, who always tunes in. Thank you, Ricardo. Really appreciate your comments. Um, Anne-Marie Damali Odette, good afternoon. Anne-Marie, you told us good, good, after, good afternoon to you as well. Uh, apparently, there was a sound issue at the beginning. We start, we oh. apologize for that. Hopefully, if there's, any, if there's any part of it that you've missed and maybe you want to ask any questions, just do so and we'll try to answer them as soon as possible. All right. So this is your show. When you ask us the questions, we are obliged to answer. Ah, uh, online, somebody's asking for three keys to wealth. Oh, I gave them earlier, but let's go repeat over them, them again. Repeat them again because for persons we can who actually, didn't hear them. Yeah, yeah we, we can. I had wanted to go in depth on them a little bit more anyway. Right, right, so right, right, there right. was investing, which I said, oh, wait, which we yeah. agreed was well, the Let me just interrupt one. you real quick. Marlon Sinclair says, I like to watch her program on Instagram, Money Mondays. So Yay. he's beginning up. Yeah, Money Mondays. So I have a new show coming out on Monday too. All right. Taking stock with Kalila Reynolds oh. going to be on YouTube. Oh, there you go, Marlon. That's something else you can tune into Kalila and, and hopefully build your portfolio and For start sure. getting some money. All right. Okay. So let's go back through the, the keys, keys to, to wealth. wealth. Yeah. So investing, which we agreed was right. the easiest yeah, and the cheapest one to start. to start. Entrepreneurship and real estate. Mm -hmm. So where I am in my journey now, I'm moving from investing to entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully after that, real estate. Right, <laughs> I, right. I'm still unfortunately not a homeowner. Uh, you know, well, and it you feels are, you and many people and I can like understand it. It has felt like an impossible task. Right. Trying to, you know, pay all the bills, pay all the school fees, and then looking at what the home the house prices are, right. especially here in Kingston. Right, right, right. And then calculating how much the mortgage is gonna be, even in a two income household. Right. My husband and I both have pretty good jobs. He's a surgeon. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> and you're calculating that mortgage payment. And you're like, Jano. <laughs> oh, like, oh, we're going to do this. <laughs> I mean, our cameraman is nodding. He knows. He knows. Like, right? Better I just continue paying rent. Right? Like, what's the point of all of it? But when you start bringing in income that is in addition to your job, mm -hmm. when you start having those multiple income streams, mm -hmm. that's when you start seeing ah, oh, this is possible. Right. When we start getting our dividend checks mm. from the investments and we see our Fontana investment going from 188 to, to $9. Oh we see God. our Fontana investment quintupling oh in God. less than a year. Then you start feeling like, okay, I feel like I this, is, cry. this is possible. This, yeah. is, this is doable. Right. And then now where I am on my journey is launching the business, which I tell you, taking stock is coming out soon. Mm. So that's the entrepreneurship. And so you want to be bringing in different streams of income. You want to be owning your production, owning what you do rather than working for somebody for all of your life. You can still continue to have your own job mm -hmm. and then have your own business right. as Extra well. So it's an slide, additional stream of income. So you have income coming from your investments. You have income coming from your business. And then you can also have income coming from real estate. If mm -hmm. you're renting, mm -hmm. if you're renting properties, think about it. You don't have to do anything. You can just, if you Sit own a property and, and you rent it. You just sit on and collect. Mm -hmm. You don't have to accept maintaining it now and again right, right, if necessary. Right. You might even charge them a, a property maintenance fee and have somebody who takes care of that too. Uh, exactly. So you just sit on and collect. And the same thing, once you've established your business, it could be that you hire people to run the business and you just sit on and collect. And collect right? The investments, See? same thing. That's the mantra. Sit on and collect. That's the mantra so. for 2019, 2020. Sit on and collect. <laughs> sit on and collect. I need to trademark that. Right? <laughs> Let's yeah. copyright that exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah, so, so you want to have passive streams of income that you don't have to be killing yourself working for Oh my gosh, 24 hours a day, they're calling you all day asleep hamster work, wheel. you're on that hamster wheel. You want to be able to just sit down and collect. Yeah, somebody online, just Chris Banton, thanks Chris for your comment. He says, we need to start get that Fontana dividend. 
<laughs> so you just I mean Fontana we, you might need for Carlos or something guys <laughs> Kalila is giving you a real plug up in here but anyway <laughs> continue now Kalila I want to ask you something I, it's one thing that um we we see it all the time but knowing how to do it properly is mm-hmm. is you know is something that's you know, not many people know budgeting mm-hmm. to making that budget so you can just like how you uh, you, sp- you touched on it earlier in terms of arranging for example a salary deduction so you can just go straight into investing but people just budget them pay the bills, pay all the obligations, see the little bit that's left over and say, no, you know, I'm going to go full joy in my life, you know, and carry mm-hmm. it on a party or whatever and buy some, whatever the case may be, whatever mm-hmm. it is they enjoy doing. And so you might not necessarily be approaching budgeting in the right way. How do you approach budgeting and what tips can you share on that? Okay, so I was talking about the same topic to some UTEC students the other day mm-hmm. about budgeting and I asked them, okay, how do you make a budget? Everybody said, students raise their hands and like, okay, so you sit down and you decide how much you're going to spend. on. You, first of all, you see how much money you have for the month coming mm-hmm. in. And then you decide what you're going to spend on each item. So food, rent, um, bills, Utilities, transportation, whatever. And you allocate what you're going to spend on these things and entertainment. I said wrong. That's not how you start your budget. Mm. For me, anyway, what I would say what I would advise people to do, the first thing you need to do when you're doing your budget is to track your spending. Mm. So rather than picking numbers out the air and guessing what you're going to spend on food and guessing what you're going to spend on entertainment and then when the budget, when you're broke at the end of the month, before Mm -hmm. the end of the month, two weeks into the month, you're broke and wondering where did all my money go? You didn't follow the budget because you didn't track your spending. Mm -hmm. So even before you allocate those resources on paper, I suggest that you track your spending. So Mm -hmm. use a budgeting app. So there's so many, there are some free ones, there are some paid ones. I use one that's called Home Budget. I've been using it for many years. I paid probably like $2.99 for it. And every time I change devices, it's still there. It's It's still there. And there's the free version of it as well. There are others that work better, like there's Mint, which can link to your debit card, but I think that only works properly in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I think you can't link it to your Jamaican account, unfortunately. So what you have to do with some of these other apps, like the one that I use is as soon as you, every time you buy something, you just put it in the app. Mm. So you said, okay, I spent $500 on lunch today on KFC, put KFC $500. And then at the end of the month, it's going to give you a chart showing you how much you spent on what. Mm -hmm. So I suggest that you do that for one month first, and then you start to see patterns in your spending. Mm-hmm. You realize how much you truly spend on stuff. And you can use that as a basis to make your actual budget. And you can use that to see where you have room to cut back as right, well. Right, like, right. wow, I didn't realize I'm spending 50 grand a month on food. Yeah, or like 10 dollars on credit or something like that. Phone credit. On phone or, credit. Yeah. You didn't realize you spend all this money on party. Right, right, right. And then right. you're wondering how the money done Already. so quick. And you, can't, you can't account for it. Right. So the first step is accounting for your spending. Accountability to yourself. So once you've tracked your spending for a month, now you can set your budget and then you continue tracking your spending using these same types of apps. Mm -hmm. And these will tell you, they can notify you. So you'll see like a red bar when you start approaching your budget limit. Yeah, yeah, right. Or if you've gone over it and then at the end of the month, you can assess and see how you really did, but they help to keep you accountable to yourself. All right. I love our Instagram followers. Somebody asked what was the name of the app and somebody who was paying attention just added it for it's called Home Budget, right? Home Budget is the one I use, but there are many of them out there too. All right, it says <coughs> uh, in your video set me for two, so okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's saying um uh, China, <laughs> China's sex adventures saying this kind of stuff should be taught in high schools. It hey, should. I totally agree. I, f- I mean, it this should. is something I wish would happen that we can lead a revolution. Maybe you can start it, go down to the <laughs> ministry and see if you can lobby and get them to teach these financial literacy because truly there are many things that we need to unlearn and relearn. Yeah. And for like, me, I wish I knew some of this stuff like, when I was just, just like give starting me 10 out. years ago. Just 10 years ago. 10 years ago would have been some great. information, right? No. For me, one of the things when I approach money, I believe that for me, money, I had to stop looking at it as an asset and start thinking of it as a tool. Mm-hmm. Why? Because when you, appro- an asset for me is like something you buy and put on or it's something that you 
be, you, you want it to have it to put it one side because that you know it's something that's nice and you just want to say you have it whereas a tool you buy it to use it mm -hmm. you have it to use it to accomplish a, a objective and so for me when you think of money as a tool it's you're less likely to think of it as something you should accumulate one side and put on in a savings account and open it and look and it's like wow look at all that money mm -hmm, in there mm -hmm. you know what i mean so when i think of it as a tool and for me that helps me to understand how money works yeah. what, what's your take on that yeah it's exactly what you hear people say making your money work for you right rather than you working for your money right so right, you right. put your money to work you invest it in right real estate you invest it in the stock market you invest it in your business or multiple businesses some people have multiple businesses right, right, right. other people are running their businesses and they're just sit on and collect sit on and <laughs> just, collect hashtag so, sit on and collect yeah so you right. just make the money work for you and right. it's the same thing you were saying you use your money as a tool for wealth creation right no let me ask you about one of the things that people, uh, I guess they tend not to think about um, or is something that they really should be is your health. Mm -hmm. Your health is a part of the financial journey because there's nothing that can wipe out finances mm -hmm. faster than medical expenses. Absolutely. And so one of the things that we should be thinking about, I guess, is uh, as part of it is insurance. Uh, I, I think I would recommend that person consider insurance. What do you take on that? I have some controversial thoughts about I, I would insurance. like to hear them because people like last I said, time I said what I really think about insurance I got into trouble okay then <laughs> should be court conversation I had court to make an apology on air <laughs> Should so I'm not going to repeat what I said about oh. insurance okay uh, <laughs> but um you want to you definitely want to have you want to be covered in mm -hmm. the event that something happens to right. you. And so I, I actually do have health insurance and I have one of the more pricier plans because mm -hmm. I, I had a relatively cheap insurance plan before. And then there are many things that they don't tell you about these plans that you have a maximum that you can access for the right. year. And once that max out, then that's it for the year till next year again. So like the reason I, I, I canceled that particular policy which I was paying like 10 grand a mm, month wow. for. Okay. For me and my, well, at the time I had one child, now I have two, a third on the way. Mm. Paying like 10 grand a month for it because they had increased the premium from six to 10. Mm -hmm. I continued to pay it every month I'm paying this. And I went to the dentist. Mm -hmm. And I went to the dentist, not even for anything fancy, just a regular. I said, well, let me, since I have this health insurance, been just paying it right. for like two years and never use anything off of it. So let me go to the dentist and just do a checkup and whatnot. And we did the checkup, the dentist did a cleaning, and he noticed something and he said, okay, so you come back next week and we do the part two of whatever we were mm -hmm. doing. And so for the first visit, I swiped the health card and that was that. And then I came back the next week. It was like, the bill was like 10, nine grand. I don't remember how much it was. It wasn't mm -hmm. a whole lot though. Came back the next week for the follow-up session Swipe the health card and they're telling me I can't use it again because mm -hmm. I, ma I maxed, yeah, maxed out, out the benefit. Yeah, allotment for the for the year or whatever. I maxed out the benefit from last week's thing, and I'm like, but I've been paying you ten grand a month for two years. That's like two hundred and forty thousand dollars, and you're not gonna pay this bill for me. That's less than ten thousand dollars. Right. And I've been paying you. All so what happened to my two hundred and forty thousand dollars? Right. So. So it sounds like that was one of the things that was, it sounds like one of those redefine print kind of moments <sighs> and understand exactly what which is one of the best you pieces of to, financial advices I would give anybody. Redefine print. You have to pay attention to the policies that you have to. I had one policy one time with my first child where I'm like, okay, I'm covered, I'm not pregnant, I'm gonna need a maternity benefit. I didn't understand the difference between inpatient and outpatient. Mm -hmm. The thing said that um, outpatient is covered, but inpatient isn't covered. Mm. Inpatient just means when you're like spending the night at the hospital. Mm -hmm, outpatient mm -hmm. means you come in and you leave mm -hmm. the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I spent the night at the hospital and didn't realize that mm. <laughs> that's not covered oh, under wow. the policy that I had. So you need to familiarize yourself with these terms right. so and that you don't get yeah. lick at the last minute not knowing. And then also, so I think... Having insurance is good for critical illness. Mm -hmm. If something like you catch cancer mm -hmm. or you lose a limb mm -hmm. or something like that, it's great to have that 
pool that you can call upon. You can get $2 million, $5 million that you can draw down mm-hmm, upon. Mm-hmm. But for the day-to-day things, I think you just need to have your own emergency fund mm-hmm. set aside. Or you can have, like even investments. Investments tend to be fairly liquid, right. meaning that you can cash them out pretty easily. If you need money in a couple of days, sell some of the stock that you have mm-hmm. and you can get that money fairly quickly Depen- and the way you need to depending do. on what you're invested in mm-hmm. there are some stocks that trade every day like a ncb trades every day every day people are buying and selling ncb mm-hmm. you have some ncb stock it's pretty liquid you can sell it quickly get some money fairly quickly and and have that put one side but if you're doing insurance i think critical illness is what you definitely need to look for to make sure that you're fully covered for that and other than that i say have your emergency fund set aside even if your emergency fund is part of your investment portfolio just have some funds that you can draw some money in hand that you can just have funds that you can draw upon at a moment's notice i think people will appreciate your candor that was really i mean we stumbled onto another major point which is to understand um some of the times we just somebody will just recommend our older person just say hey get one of those get one of those policies get one of those things get one of those and just i was so mad when i realized that i had just basically thrown two hundred and forty thousand dollars down the drain that they weren't covering the simple the simplest thing, things that you would expect them to you based on what you them to cover. You know. So after that, I canceled that policy and I started putting it in a separate savings account that mm-hmm. was my emergency fund. That was a salary deduction too, so I never missed it. Mm-hmm. It's the same money that was going to the insurance. Mm-hmm. This exact amount that was going to the insurance company every month was going to a savings account. Any little thing that I need to buy some medication, right. run to the hospital, pick the sick, you can just draw out of that fund. Mm-hmm. And that 10 grand a month accumulated real quick it accumulates pretty quickly yeah. so and, and I, I used it for health and for car stuff right because right. car stuff pops yeah. up quickly too oh, yeah. and yeah. insurance is car insurance is another thing right car insurance as soon as they catch an accident they want to <laughs> raise your premiums right. they raise your rates that they, they want to contest you paying out the money mm-hmm. it's a whole <laughs> it's a whole this adulting thing is not as simple as people think it isn't trust me you know what I'm you would saying? think car insurance is there so that when something happens you they pay out right. it's not that simple it's never that simple and so you it might take to... months before they actually make the payout because they want to do an investigation and find out who was in the wrong if you were in the wrong because if the other driver contests your account then they have to do a whole investigation and then your car mash up in the meantime, you're not getting any money. So you need to have your emergency fund Say intact. Time, and then hopefully, know. hopefully they pay you, pay you back the insurance company eventually. Eventually. Because we're mandated by law to have car insurance. Right. So that one is not optional. So hope and then that way if you if you do get your money back, then it's like a windfall. You know, I'm just really glad that you're here giving it the real undiluted the, the, the information from a person who is doing it, the adulting, because these are the things that many youngsters don't know. Mm-hmm. They only find it find out about it the hard way when it, when it happens. And then, so like I said, I, if we had somebody to tell us this information when we were like 20, I don't know how receptive we would have been. I hope I would have been receptive, but trust <laughs> me. This, the value of this kind of information is 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 you, you can't pay for it. Trust mm-hmm. me, you cannot pay for it. You know, so we're glad Kalila is here and she's breaking it down to you in real raw. She's sharing her own personal experiences. There's no better um, advice than that. And I'm sure and they not, appreciate it. It's not a criticism of how our parents did things. Yeah. Our parents just grew up in a different time than we did, where things were different, where yeah. you actually did make interest on savings in the bank. Right. Back in their day, nowadays you're not making any interest. It, right. it costs you more in fees, right. fees to save and, your money and, in and the bank and all those things. than it does pay you in interest. And the way banks are supposed to be structured, the way this financial system was originally designed is that so they have savings. They, you pool your money in a bank. So they're holding all your money for you. Mm-hmm. you and that's called savings. Mm-hmm. And they give you back interest on your savings mm-hmm. because you're basically you're lending them your money. Pretty much, yeah. And then they make money by lending that same money to you and other people at a higher interest rate than the savings interest rate that they pay. Mm-hmm. So when you take a loan from the bank, so they might be paying you back in the day Let's say they're paying you 4% interest on your savings. Mm -hmm. And then you take a loan for, say, 12, 13%. So the difference between the interest that they pay you to save 
and the interest that they earn from lending your pooled money mm-hmm. is how they make a profit. Right. But those spreads, and if you listen to Adley Shah, he's always talking about the spreads, the spreads, the mm-hmm. spreads. The spreads refers to the difference between the savings interest rate, the lending interest rate mm-hmm. for the most part. They're spreads in different things to like Epix, foreign mm-hmm. exchange mm-hmm. trading and so on. So, th- But those spreads have widened dramatically since the time our parents were our age. Mm-hmm. And now, so now, savings, how much How much percent you make on savings in the bank? Do you know? I, the last person, a person somebody like it might be 1% if so it's much. less than 1%. Yeah, if so much, yeah. When I asked that question at, at UTEC, the kids were like, 10%? Mm-hmm. Like, 10%? Mm-hmm. Which bank is paying which, 10% right? on savings? I wish. Right. That would not be a dream. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so they'll they'll pay you less than 1%. And then by the time you use the, so the ATM fees and the service this fee charges and the service and charge and the debt penalties fee. penalties and all these things that they charge you for that you don't quite know what they are for. All the fees come up to more than what they pay you in interest. Right. For the most part. For most of us anyway, unless you're saving millions and millions of right, dollars, right, then right, that right. zero point something percent might actually translate might, to something that might you can actually use translate that cover the fees that you say <laughs> basically your principal doesn't get touched. You know exactly, what I mean? exactly. But for most of us, we end up paying more in fees than we earn in interest mm. on a savings account. And then the interest rates on the loans have gone up and up and up over the years. Mm-hmm. So you know what the average credit card rate is in Jamaica? I would say about twenty five percent there. If I'm, average, I'm just I'm just spitballing here. Twenty five percent is the lowest I've heard, and I only recently heard of that. Okay, but average is probably some, somewhere like forty five percent. Oh my god, it's <laughs> way up there. Oh my it's god, it's very high. It's in the forties yeah. for sure. I heard of one company offering a twenty five percent, and that's definitely by far the lowest okay. in the industry. And then you have your small business loans, which tend to be higher interest rate because mm-hmm. they're a bit riskier. Right, right, right. You get a small business loan like 20%. If you're doing a microfinance loan, no. The no, payday loans. Yeah, that, those are a whole different category. It's like sometimes 100% interest rate you're paying. But what they do is that they, they kind of trick you. Mm-hmm. They don't necessarily write 100% interest rate in the terms. What they might say is pay me back X amount. Mm-hmm. But when you calculate it over the period, over the period, back, like you ever go courts, right? And you right, say, right. Higher and you purchase, say the yeah. higher purchase, and you see they have a, a sticker, pr- a cash price right. on the item, and then they have a monthly price and mm-hmm. a weekly price. Have you ever calculated how much the weekly price over the three years mm-hmm. comes up to? You pay for the item three times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, 300, yeah. 200 percent interest. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever so, sit down and calculate yeah, it. Yeah. So. But see, when they say just pay four grand a week, like okay, I can manage I that. I can manage that. Yeah. That sounds reasonable, but you never really calculated what it actually works out to. Yeah. And the same thing with the, a lot of the microcredit institutions, do that. So the spreads have become so wide exorbitant so what you're getting so you from what to, you think you're saving exactly, is exactly yeah. exactly so you have to find other ways to mitigate that and to actually make some money so if you're investing on the stock exchange the average return last year was somewhere like 30 percent mm-hmm. but this is a very good year right, it's not right. guaranteed to be that high every year and like i said that was the best in the world that particular year so you're not going to go on the NASDAQ mm, and mm. guarantee 30%. You're not going to go on the, um, the Toronto Stock Exchange or the Nikkei in Japan or the FTSE 100 in London mm-hmm. and guarantee 30%. So you have to know your market as well yeah, right. and know what you're investing in. Because there are companies in Jamaica that are listed that definitely are not giving you that you might lose money on that have mm, lost money. That's true. That's, there are that's, IPOs that, that's just life. There's you know IPOs I mean? that's come out this year that people have lost money on so far. They mm-hmm. may recover. They may bounce back. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But not everyone is a, is a guarantee. So you have to do your research, understand the company. If you are comfortable with where the company is going, if you see, okay, I like what they're doing. It's a strong industry right now. Like mm-hmm. right now, I went to a, an investor briefing this morning by Mayberry mm-hmm. because Blue Power Group is spinning off their lumber depot. 
It's a blue power which makes blue soap. They have a lumber depot. You wouldn't even know right. that. Right, you'd never know that. You would think of blue soap and lumber. Right, right, but right. But they actually make most of their mo- the majority of their money from the lumber depot. They make more from lumber than they do from soap, surprisingly. So they're spinning that off into a separate company now. And what's doing great? What industry is doing great right now in Jamaica? Construction. Yeah, that's true. We see the cranes all over the place. Cranes are everywhere. everywhere. Stuff is building. So guess what? Lumber sales are going to be good. No, Kalila, people need to pay for that information. I, mean, I don't. I, that is something me and you must talk about after here. We mustn't share these things. And no, no. Cement is selling like crazy because stuff is building. Mm-hmm. So you have to start making start these types making of these connections. connections in your mind. Yeah. When you say the summer that was gone, I saw somebody tweet it on hashtag finance Twitter JA. Mm-hmm. Somebody was tweeting that you know it's really really hot. That means enough water selling. Which means. That means Wisinko. I should buy some Wisinko shares. Yeah, right. Or Pepsi or Coca-Cola or whoever. Yeah, so you Brilliant. start making those types of connections and then you see, okay, I think this industry is going to do very well mm-hmm. in the future. So I should buy some shares in this particular company. When you look at what's going on in energy, mm-hmm. right now the push to renewable energy, right, right, right. the government has this goal that 50% of the country's energy should come from renewables or um forgot what the other word is by by 2030 by by 2030 so look at mpc caribbean clean energy wigton wigton of course being the big one just listed right right. solar persons doing solar any persons in solar in on on the market anything like that you know i don't know that we have any water or wind or anything like but i mean you get the idea renewable energy sources right yeah Renewable energy sources, ones that can generate that kind. Yeah, well, I mean. Yeah, so look at the industry. Pay attention to what's going on in the country. Even things that you can see with your own two eyes. You can see the construction, boom. So Mm -hmm. likely companies involved in construction in some way or form Mm -hmm. are going to benefit. Transportation might be connected to that, things like that. So you just need to start making the connections in your mind. So And you start doing this from early, getting into that mindset from early. Exactly, and that's how you choose what you want to invest in. I feel like this conversation could go on and on, but I think we're approaching almost an hour. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> We've had this is a great, really enlightening conversation. You taught me many, many things. Well, our tech person said it's 46 minutes. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to round out the hour or you can make <laughs> it work. I don't know. Is there anything else that you wanted to share? I mean, uh, you came prepared, so I don't want to make, I don't want to leave anything out. You was, know? Well, we went over much of much of the stuff. I said, pay yourself first, how people get rich, keys to wealth. We spoke about all that already. Um, oh, one thing I did want to mention because I like to call this the keys to adulting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one thing that you want to know as a young person is keeping yourself secure online because mm. you hear about all the scamming right right just right, yesterday right. somebody called me from a, com- a particular company that i had recently signed up for a shipping company mm-hmm. i recently signed up to use that shipping company to you know bring stuff in you or buy stuff online right, right, right. and they call me and they asked me for my trn and i said um how do I know you're really calling from this company? Right, obviously. <laughs> this is kind of... Could be anybody asking for your TRN. Exactly. Coming, right? First, they asked me uh, my address. And I'm like, okay, I gave them my address. Mm-hmm. And then they asked for my TRN. And I'm like, um, who did you say you are again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I said, well, is there an option for me to fill this out on your website mm-hmm. online? Because I know their website is encrypted and whatnot. And she said, yes, you can go to the website and you can fill in the the additional information that apparently I didn't fill in when I was creating the profile. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that's what I opted to do rather than give this random person over the phone who I don't know. I can't verify that this is who they say they are because mm-hmm. the scammers, they get your info. Yeah. And that's how the scammers get really a, sophisticated. That's how the days. scammers get a foot in the door. You would think, well, how would she know? How would a scammer know that I just signed up for this particular service? Mm -hmm. The scammers they have, that's what the lead sheets they're called. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's how they get their foot in the door. It's not that all these people are so gullible. Some of them are. But it's because they have a hook. They tell you something to make you believe them. Mm -hmm. So they'll say, hello, I'm calling from so-and-so. I see that you just visited uh, whatever supermarket and you were purchasing these particular items. And then you say, yes, yes, that's me. I did that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the reason they know that is because they sold or bought or they bought or stole these lead sheets mm-hmm. with that information. 
to sweeten you up mm -hmm. and to get you interested and to get you believing their story mm -hmm. and then they say well since uh, have you ever listened to some of these phone yeah, the scammer we, I mean, phone we, calls well, they pop up from time to yeah. time online. you hear them I mean you so, want to people fall for them but then again hey I yeah mean, so they'll you tell you know. well I see you just went to the supermarket and you bought these items and because you bought that item you're now eligible to win a 2020 Mercedes mm -hmm. Because you in Jamaica listening to these scammer stories, you think, how can people fall for this foolishness? Right. I didn't enter any sweepstakes for a Mercedes. How can somebody call me and tell me I won a Not Mercedes so bright, right. <laughs> when I didn't enter didn't a sweepstakes? Enter any competition, didn't I didn't like that, enter right? any competition, but that's how they do it. They'll say, well, I saw that you did whatever transaction. And so you were automatically entered into this promo and now you're a winner. Just send me $5,000 and you can collect your car. And some people fool, fool, and they fall for it, mm. unfortunately. But like I was saying, so when the person called me yesterday, uh, she may well have been legitimately from that company. But, you can't but take the I chance. just couldn't yeah. take the chance. Yeah. I had to be cautious with my identity, who I give my identity information to, such as my TRN. So I rather me be proactive and call the company, mm -hmm, knowing mm -hmm. what their number is and giving them. Or go on the website and, and do that there or go in the office and do that there because I can't verify from somebody calling me right. that they Absolutely. are who they say they are. You have to protect your identity at all times, even simple things like when you're using your debit card, mm -hmm. covering up that pin every single time you do it. You don't know where they have the cameras looking, where they have these cameras Set Over, up, right, right, right. hovering so that they can see your pin. So even when somebody gives me, like you go to the gas station and they have the portable mm -hmm, point mm -hmm. of sale machines <laughs> and you do it in your, even then it's just I a habit. Your window and be like, it's just, a, it's just become a habit. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't trust you personally, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but when it becomes a habit, right. then you just, you don't forget to do it. I used to feel a little uh, away about doing it because I used to feel like I'm offending the person. Right, 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 right. Like I'm saying... I feel that way too, honestly. Like I'm, saying, I, I'm not going to lie, I feel that way too. Like if I, if I do this, then I'm saying I don't trust you. You, you are not a trustworthy person or something like that. Yeah. Right. But when it becomes a habit, you don't even think about that anymore. Mm. So Somebody, I just yeah. do it all the time. It just comes natural. Don, Mar Don Maris Online, she's saying, this is really an eye-opener for me. Not all the time I can watch. Is there another way I can get these information? Please, sure, Don, you can tune in. You can... It will be uploaded to the JIS Facebook page after we're done, and we will be putting it up on YouTube as well. I would also plug that you should follow Kalila because she dispenses this information all the time. Uh, what is that? Money Mondays, right? Yep. Right? So Money Mondays J A. Money Mondays J A. Where uh, what, what platforms can she find? So that? on Instagram and YouTube for the most part. I right. also share them on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. Right. But so. they're directly uploaded to Instagram and YouTube every. Well. <laughs> I have all kind of stuff. I post stuff every day. Great. But Money Mondays is every Monday. All right. And then so. taking stock is going to be on Monday evening. So Money Mondays comes up on, on Monday mornings. But of course, they're there for posterity. Right, 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 right. And then in the evenings now, taking stock is going to premiere, which gives you more information about investing. So you were curious about the, the Lumber Depot. Right, IPO right, coming right, up. right. And so there are people who want more information. And I've found people have asked me questions, even you did, mm -hmm. that I can't necessarily answer for legal reasons. <laughs> okay. like, I can't give financial you can't give advice because right. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Mm -hmm. So on taking stock, I have licensed financial advisors as part of the panel. Mm -hmm. So I can okay. ask them those questions like, is this, is, a, is this a good buy? Should I sell this particular stock? Okay. So that's definitely being, more practical, actual, tangible. It's like do this, do that, that step-by-step kind, of step kind of information. So more, more in-depth analysis right. of the stock market and business stuff that's coming up right. um so that's why i had I decided that i needed to do taking stock because money mondays is more me chatting to you yeah, me talking yeah, to yeah. the camera and breaking things down in a simple way mm -hmm. so what is an ipo how do i get started in investing mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. what are stocks right, right, <laughs> even right. as basic as that and then taking stock gets more detailed into it so you watch money mondays if you're just just starting out and then after you've watched those videos and you start kind of getting an idea then you can watch taking stock for the additional information if you've started investing now you can figure out what to do with my money all right and uh, you are welcome don Marsh she's saying thanks much she appreciates this so i guess she'll be following you just want a new follower she'll be Yay. following you and finding out all your information at kalila ray 
K A L I L A H R E Y. That's my handle on everything. So if you type in youtube.com slash Kalila Ray, facebook.com slash Kalila Ray, on Instagram and Twitter at Kalila Ray, mm-hmm. it's the same name. All right. So, Kalila, um, last thing I wanted to ask you about is for me, doing all these things, it can become very oppressive when you start to structure your life in a way to kind of make sure you have your money set one side and you're doing these things to achieve financial freedom and achieve financial happiness. But at the same time, if you if you go too deep in it, I find sometimes that you can get caught up, you can lose sight of what um, the fact that financial freedom is today's life, meaning that you should be looking to enjoy yeah. what you earn. So yeah, that's talk true. to me about that as well. At first, I appreciate that as much work as you, you should... Enjoy where you, enjoy where you work. Yeah, enjoy yeah. where you spend. You, know what you I mean? have some money set aside for fun. Exactly. You can't budget yourself out of everything. Right. You need to make sure that you have some money set aside for fun. Like I have a friend who has a company. Well, I can say who it is. Patria K. Aarons has mm. Sweetie Company. Right, right. And she right. has a line item in her company that literally says fun. Fun for her staff. So like staff retreats and, you know, a little whatever. That's just fun. And the same thing applies to your personal life. You can't budget yourself out of it. I mean, I understand you're living paycheck to paycheck and things are hard. Yeah. But that's why you want to start looking at ways to increase your income, which are passive ways of increasing your income. You don't have to take on an extra job, right. literally, to, to go increase out that your income. And, go work or, and then know. you can you know, set aside some money to enjoy yourself as well. I like to get my nails done. and Ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, my husband said, you don't need to get your nails done. You're already pretty. I say, but I can't see my face. (laughs) I see my hands all the time. So when they're pretty, I feel pretty. (laughs) All right. Lovely. It it caused a little change, but that's something that gives me joy. I I like getting them done. I believe. I mean, And it's relaxing and all that. I found that your well-being, your your happiness is very important to your well-being and and your state of mind. So if if you're just saving money, saving money, saving money, or investing money, you're not spending any of it, you're not seeing the actual benefit of what you're working, what you're saving, what you're trying to do, it can become very oppressive. It it can, but it it all depends on your mindset too, on what what your goals are. Like if you're somebody who's really Mm goal-oriented and you just have this vision in mind and that you're going to save, 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 save and accumulate for five years Mm -hmm. and not spend... I mean, that might be personally satisfying to you. Right. And you might be happy with that. I'm not going to be happy with that, me um, personally. Me and you both. <laughs> but some people are like that, where yeah. that is personally satisfying, just looking at the opening up their spreadsheet and their bank account and, their and, their bank account like, and ah, seeing, seeing the returns. All those zeros, you know? That makes them happy. Then right. if that's what makes you happy, then do you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that's a good note to end on. We've, uh, we've talked about so many things. And, you know, uh, the, one of the key takeaways for me is that, you know, Read the fine print, understand what you're getting yourself into, whatever financial products you, you, you invest in, whatever course of action you take to kind to try and improve your life financially, improve your financial wellness and so on. Make sure you understand what you're getting into, what you're saving for, what you're trying to accomplish. Get to understand yourself, what you want out of life, what you want to accomplish, what you what what, you know, what are your financial goals, what would you like to have for your children, your family, etc. Once you understand all that, you can start making efforts to build a portfolio so you can craft something that works for you. And as Kalila said, have an eye open. Think about ways in which um, money is flowing in and around the economy so that you can see, for example, as she said, there's a lot of construction going on. Maybe I should be investing in cement or mm-hmm. persons who make blocks, persons who you know, provide the inputs that feed into the construction sector so you can have a way to double your money, triple mm-hmm. your money, make some, you know. So at the end of the day, the overall objective is to sit down and collect. That's right. <laughs> I love that. sit down and collect, <laughs> right? And just we, we just thank you for tuning in. This is the kind of um, information that we feel is necessary out there so persons can start achieving their financial goals so that Jamaicans all over can start thinking about that they can they can have the things that they want. They mm-hmm. can live the lifestyle that they want without necessarily resorting to any, um, you know, untoward means of doing it. There's ways to make money. Once you understand how money works, you can start putting yourself out there. I mean, it's not a guarantee. There is risk. But if you know what you're doing, 
you can you can make some money you know what i mean you know you can all make some money and be absolutely. Like happy right absolutely right so on that note time it's time for us to wrap thanks to everyone who tuned into our discussion especially those of you who sent in your questions and your comments we really really do appreciate it and if you sent in a question or a comment and we didn't answer it answer it in our discussion not to worry we'll be going back through afterwards and we'll be able to give you the answers that you need and we can give you a link we'll have Kalila repeat her information towards the end so that you can hit her up send her dms send her an email whatever the case may be if you want some more personal information so that she can answer those questions for you remember that our audience plays a major part in our show if there's anyone in particular you'd like us to have in the studio, let us know, and we'll try as best as possible to have that person in studio soon. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, the Jamaica Information Service, to see who will be in studio next. We do this every Thursday live on Facebook. I've been your host, Vaughn Davis, and this has been Studio 58A Live. Thank you again for joining us, and please have a wonderful day. But just before we go, Kalila, all your information. Yes, so I'm on social media at Kalila Ray, K A. L I L A H R E Y, and that's on Instagram and Twitter, youtube.com slash Kalila Ray, facebook.com slash Kalila Ray, LinkedIn, same thing. All right, so look her up, check her out, check out Money Moves, and check out Money Mondays. Money Mondays J-A. I also have Money Moves, well, which right. comes on on a Wednesday. Right, right. So this, uh, this and I have What's in It for Me, which is a partnership for Ministry of Finance. Which explains more economic matters. All right. Well, there you go. So this lady what is sounds debt like GDP, she. What is GDP? All that kind of stuff. Less, it's safe to say she knows what she's talking about, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So follow her. Get in touch with her. I mean, she can help you to, you know, live your best life. Thank you again for joining us. We really do sit appreciate. Sidong Ang. Hashtag Sidong Ang <laughs> Have a wonderful day, ladies and gentlemen.